quorum, the quorum and uh, all American County. Uh, I remember the expression uh, that we are not defined by our losses and we've had the roaring 20s begin in a rather fascinating way with this tornado and we thank God that nobody was hurt. Uh, as, as it summed up in, uh, in the Chronicle newspaper this morning, it, I think we're stronger to, when we act together and the county indeed has done that. That's the spirit of community that we have. We lost a high school but no lives and we will rebuild and we will take care of those children and their families. And as it says in Mark chapter 4, uh, Jesus rebuked the storm and we were spared significant damage to our the, the lives and property of the people around that school. But we also, during the holidays, lost a great man. We lost Gene Falkenberry, and his legacy persisted on Sunday, for those of you who are out there, and you watch the men and women that he had trained and the cooperation that he had garnered with other agencies, like our good Sheriff Lee, thank you for being here today, and the school district all pulling together. It was a great moment for our county, and it remains that way, and tomorrow we'll have school for those children. And in remembrance of him, uh, it, it was as if Gene was present. The first person on the scene at midnight uh, that morning in that rain was a volunteer fireman, one of Gene's men, uh, Brandon Price, a volunteer, a fireman, one of Gene's men. He would be proud, and I hope he'll be proud of us in the year ahead. And I ask you to join me in a moment of silence in memory of our great friend that we've lost. Amen. Amen. And with that, I will ask Mr. Connell to lead us into the new year with the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, please forgive us for our sins and help us do what's right. Please have mercy upon us as we move into 2020. May all of our activities be pleasing unto thee. Father, please bless those who've been impacted by the property damage that came to North Central Please bless the students, families, and school district employees and administrators to be organized and able to carry out the purposes of education effectively. Please bless the family of Gene Falkenberry. We miss him and love him, and we pray that thou wilt lift him up and help him through this challenging and tough time. And we pray that his legacy may live on through all those that he's taught and impacted. As always, we pray for wisdom and charity as we make decisions here in these council chambers for the benefit of Kershaw County. Please bless our great nation. Please bless our military and those that serve in law enforcement and put themselves in harm's way, all those who are emergency responders. Please bless and watch over our family members and guide us. We say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Mr. Connell. Uh, we move now to public comments. Uh, Mr. DeBose, can you tell us how many we have signed up? Uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the council, seven people signed up, so they'll get a little over four minutes each. Um, the first person signed up, signed up is, is Penry Gustafson. And uh, as Ms. Gustafson comes up, I would remind you it's an opportunity for members of the public to share information with council not a time for debate or the exchange of question and answers. I ask you also to keep your comments within the, the purpose of this uh, body and maintain uh, the decorum and the serious businesses that we carry forward here on behalf of the people. Madam, please. Thank you. Um, I'm Henry Gustafson. And uh, tonight, I just wanted to share some thoughts regarding the resolution being brought forth tonight. Um, 20 years ago, I wouldn't be saying these words because I, I never could have imagined our country would be going in the direction it's going. Um, and I'm kind of disturbed by the, uh, the trends that are happening across the country in regard to um, Second Amendment rights, discussions, firearms, et cetera, et cetera. So I think the Second Amendment was 
written very brilliantly. And I think it still stands today. But this, uh, no offense to anyone here, but this democratic push to ban handguns um, uh, has been distressing to me. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons why the resolution has come forward. Um, District of Columbia versus Heller, 2008. A lot of us are familiar with this Supreme Court um, proclamation of the Second Amendment, uh, which actually established an individual right to possess firearms. And it struck down the DC handgun ban. And then um, the Second Amendment was further strengthened with the Supreme Court rulings in 2010 with the decision of McDonald versus City of Chicago. But again, um, seizing guns and you know creating special local ordinances and all, I just would not have guessed we would be there, but we are there today. Um, I do not agree with a collective rights theory that citizens don't have an individual right to possess guns, and, and I don't believe governmental bodies should be having the authority to regulate firearms. I think that should be up to our states, up to our um, local leaders. And all those people who were made fun of after Obama was elected, when they went out and bought their firearms and their ammo, everybody mocked them. I remember this very clearly. Went up through the roof, they got made fun of. But it turns out, um, complete gun control has been part of this democratic agenda for decades. They were not paranoid. They were just observant. So I think we do need, now, we do need bolder voices, stronger voices on every level to stand up for individual rights and our liberties. I think for the safety of every citizen, we need to monitor and speak out against any legislation that might support a gun registry. I don't know, that's, that's a state and federal thing, but I think things do uh, trickle down to local levels. I don't support a gun registry. And while I'm here, I'm just gonna add a gun-free zone um, I'm against gun-free zones because I think they target innocent lives by just providing a roadmap for the criminals out there. Um, just puts a big target on their backs. So uh, I know there's a lot of discussion and a lot of, um, I hope this will be a good public discourse. and We can continue this as an open discussion and not be combative and divisive about this. But um, I, do, I do support the resolution tonight because I think that's what we need to do. We need to stand up for Second Amendment rights because they're getting shot down at every level, everywhere. And um, we've gotta be strong and support them. And I think this, again, again, years ago, this wouldn't have been necessary, it'd be a waste of time, but not today. I think today it's a good day to do it. Thank you so much for all of your work. Happy New Year. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Mr. DeBose. Second person that signed up is Bruce Brett, Brett Schlitz. Bruce. I can't, read, I can't read your writing. Yeah, I was kind of <laughs> scribbling. All right, Mr. Brucci, please. Uh, hey, I'm Bruce Brucci from West Columbia, and I felt this was so important to drive over and offer support and pat you guys on the back for what you're doing. And as I stand here tonight, I want to share some good news. In Virginia, which we're all aware of, the gun confiscation was just stopped because of the pro-gun crowd that showed up at the legislature. You guys are the first uh, council in the county to take a proactive step to protect the Second Amendment. Because here's the thing that's so good about what y'all are doing. Crooks will not follow the rules. So by turning law-abiding citizens into criminals, you have made your county and our state less safe. I commend you, I thank you, Councilman Jones, thank you for leading with this. And I'm glad we are breaking out the Second Amendment and standing with it. You know, I know we all stand and agree with the Constitution, but what's under attack right now is the Second Amendment. I think it's very important that we stay with that and on that theme. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Council. Thank you, sir. Mr. DeVos. The third person signed up is Sheriff Lee Bone. All right, Sheriff. Uh, 
I'm also up here thanking our county council. This is a good step, protecting our Second Amendment rights. I'm all for you. I support it 100%. Um, also want to talk about our checks and balances. Even if we didn't have a council that was supportive of our Second Amendment, and you were to come up with some kind of ordinance to violate the Second Amendment, I would not enforce it. So that works, kind of works both ways. We are glad to have a council that supports the Second Amendment and a sheriff that supports it. That's a win-win for Kershaw County. I want to thank every one of you for it. Thank you, Mr. Sheriff. Uh, Mr. Bose. Thank you. Fourth person signed up is Justin Jones. Good evening, gentlemen. It's been a while since I've spoke, and it's uh, good to see all of you again. Um, I had a somewhat more eloquent uh, speaking notes drafted, but I'm going to sum it up with this. Don't give up your guns, period, dot. Anybody who asks you to give up your guns is planning to do something to you that you will wish you had kept them for. Uh, but more succinctly, those who beat their so uh, swords into plowshares end up plowing for those who kept their swords. Uh, and the Second Amendment is never more than just a few council members away from being stripped of, from us. I've had a council member tell me, basically, that he doesn't have to convince me if he convinces himself. And that's all it takes. All it takes is four of you to convince yourselves that I do not have this right to my guns, and you will vote to try to take them away from me, and then we're going to fight. And that's period. That's the end of the story right there. I hope it never comes to that, and I hope the fact that the Second Amendment is not, did not get created in the 1700s, but stems all the way back to the Middle Ages and English common law, would be enough to convince us that the traditions and collected wisdom of our ancestors has shown us that an armed populace is a peaceful populace and a protected populace. There's a mantra I like to live by, and I heard it only recently, but it really stuck with me. And it goes something, something similar to this. Strong men create good times. Good times create weak men. Weak men create hard times. And hard times create strong men. And then oftentimes we find that good times and these weak men forget how important the rights that the strong men gave us are to our future prosperity. In conclusion, I'd like to say the second is not up for debate. It is not quibbling over semantics because our comma is here or our comma is there. The militia is us. It is us. It is all of us. This is the organized and the unorganized militia. The right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. They do not understand how that could be confusing, but apparently it is to some. And if you are afraid of guns, I've got no issue with you. You don't have to have them. But I'm not afraid of them. And I know how useful they can be for our protection. And it is not about hunting. It is always about personal protection. It has been about having weapons on par with those that are in common military usage. Not muskets, nothing archaic, not English longbows. Common military usage. Thank you for your time, and I support you in this measure. Thank you very much, sir. Mr. DeBose. The fifth person that signed up and the next person is Alan, Alan Cobb, uh, Mr. Cobb. Thank you, gentlemen. I want to start out, I also support Second Amendment resolution, we got to protect our gun rights. Uh, next thing I want to talk about this evening is good things. I understand we have custom profiling coming to the county, 70 new jobs, $1.7 million investment, and I keep hearing some good things about the water walk, the river walk, rather. That's coming along pretty good. Uh, with that being said, let me go on to some other things I want to talk about. Uh, one is starting at 530. Gentlemen, working men and women have a hard time getting there at 530. Most people work to five. It's kind of hard to go home, do whatever it is you got to do, get ready, come to this meeting and be here by 530, especially if you want to speak. Yeah, if you want to speak, you really need to be here a few minutes early, correct? So uh, I'd really like to see this bumped on up to six o'clock so we can get the working men and women in Kershaw County that want to say something, give them the opportunity. 
Next thing I want to talk about was deals. I think Kershaw County can get better deals. Whenever we built the Pine Tree Hill School out on Highway 34, a lot of people questioned that. Was that a good deal? That land, some said it's kind of wet. That pond out there is not for, well, like Walmart has to build a, a pond for the water to run off of all that concrete. The school had to build a pond. I might be wrong, but I think a lot of people were saying the land was so wet they had to have, have a place for all that water to go. That's not a good deal. I don't even know how much was paid for that land, but it seemed like we could have done that different. It seemed like we could have. Uh, perhaps built Pine Tree Hill School. There was enough land there, almost 15 acres on Lakeshore Drive. Seemed like we could have done something different, a better deal. That's what we after. Schools in Bethune. I don't know the entire story on it, but the only good thing I've seen so far is they're going to give us the land for free to build a new school on. Uh, I'm sure the people on Highway 97 that are going to lose Bear in the Cab School. If you stop and think about all the women with little children, six, seven, eight-year-old kids, put them on a bus to go all the way from Barron to Cab, and some of them live up and down Highway 97 all the way to North Central. I just don't know that that's a good deal for them. So we need to, we need to work on that. And uh, jobs, I was just mentioning, plastics company coming. That's good. That's good. But it made me wonder, what are we doing wrong? We got Sumter right next door. They got the Continental Tire contract. Now, what are they doing different? Are they offering some kind of incentive? Are they offering a better deal? What are we not doing? The only, well, we've got a lot of industry here. Don't get me wrong. But when are we going to get another DuPont, another investor, something, something big, something that pays really good? Continental Tire would have been a good opportunity for Kershaw County. And for some reason, we didn't even have a crack at it. What are we doing wrong? We got to have a better deal. Better deal. Uh, taxes. <laughs> taxes keep going up. We got, to, we got to tighten our belts. Are we, are, we, are we offering the best deals? Are we trying to get good deals so that we don't have to bump the taxes up so high? That's what I'm talking about tonight is good deals. I don't think we're getting them, fellas. We need to work on better deals. Wasteful spending is pretty much what I'm hitting at. Are we wasting money on pet projects? Uh, a lot of people complaining about the tax bills this year. The, uh, the river walk, I'm going to tell you, it's turning out to be a beautiful place from what I hear. It is. But it started out, people, people didn't like it. They thought it was a bad deal. The land just wasn't worth uh, you know, people have been living here a long time, knew how it flooded and just wasn't very appealing to the eye, which is changing now. I understand it's really looking good. But did we get a good deal? I remember one council meeting, the fellow talked about how value, how valuable another section of land not far from there was. Might have been, but it was on good, dry, good business property. There's a lot of difference between that. The river walk, hmm. Partly creekside, partly riverside, and we haven't got it now. Ain't no need in uh, uh, worrying about it anymore. But point is, better deals. Did we get a good deal on it? A lot of people said no. A lot of people, so many people said no that so many complaints were going around. Mr. Chairman, it's been five minutes. Five minutes, sir. If you can wrap that up, please. I go will. ahead. I will. Uh, we'll call it a day. Well, thank you. <laughs> um, Happy New Year. Uh, Mr. DeVos, please. The next person signed up is Jim Steele. Mr. Steele. Uh, good evening. It's been a while since I've been here. Uh, I'd like to congratulate you on the resolution uh, that's before you tonight. Uh, I strongly support it. I think it sends the right message to uh, the folks over in Columbia, and hopefully they'll listen to it. Um, also, I'd like to say that um, I'm a bit surprised, but, uh, but I'm very glad to see that um, the council has taken such a strong stand on part of our Constitution. I hope that in the future, this same support that you're showing for the Second Amendment will also 
uh, be shown to all the other rights and privileges granted to us by our Constitution. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Steele. Mr. DeBose. The last person that signed up is Tom Webb the third. Uh, Mr. Webb. About the red flag. Um, Can you bring the mic over by your mouth? I'll, I'll, I'll talk a little louder. Red Thank flag you. law. Um, We've spoken about the Second Amendment. Somebody almost quoted it. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Now, people have made all kinds of things out of that. You know, they stretch it this way and that way. Uh, one of the words that hangs up uh, some discussions of it is regulated. And, of course, we have the... Uh, the organized militia, that's the state guard. We are the unorganized militia, all of us, who are not really involved in anything. And how is it regulated? Well, the, the word meant something different way back then than it does now. Uh, you think of regulated as a book full of regulations, but regulated really meant that it worked well, that when you called out the militia, they came. I had an old uncle that made it almost 100 years old, and then his, he had an old black and white TV that wouldn't work right sometimes. It was rolling, and he'd ask somebody to come in and regulate it for him. He didn't say adjust it or tune it in. He said regulate it because he had a, a different sense of what the, how the word was used to make it work right, regulated. Well, uh, Second Amendment. <clears throat> it, um, it's, we're supposed to be well-practiced so that we show up on time if anybody calls us out, and we don't do that. It's a shame. There have been some militias uh, right before the Murrah building was blown militias here in South Carolina and locally. Um, I knew some of the people. I never joined it. I might would have, but uh, when the Murrah building blew up, it scared everybody and the militias quit meeting. So uh, I want to point out that gun ownership is not um, just a, a foolish thing, that um, a fad. It's really, it's like a, a hormone. It's an American hormone. Anybody who's raised any kind of animals know that, that males and females are generally a little different, and it's hormonal differences. Males tend to be a little bit more aggressive, stubborn, um, kind of things that maybe Americans should be like. Owning guns is like a hormone in a way. It's, it makes you have a little different attitude, and a little different from the European countries, for instance, that have put up with an awful lot of mistreatment. So uh, even if we don't pull out a gun and don't use it, we're not threatening anybody with it, we have that hormone that in any, even if we don't own a gun, we have this, this ability to own one if we want to. I, I actually knew a, a rabbi one time that uh, his family got out of Europe just in time. And um, he joined the U.S. military and died about three years ago in the Veterans Hospital. Very bright guy. He said that, um, that private property was the foundation of civilization and that gun ownership was the foundation of private property. He was in the NRA. He wore a little pin. He never owned a gun, but he had a right to own a gun, and it gave him an attitude, a very good attitude. I very much appreciated the old guy gone now. <clears throat> so there's this brotherhood, something that kind of binds us together because we uh, own guns. You know, where'd you get yours? How much you pay for it? Where's your ammo come from? Where do you target shoot? Uh, good people are bound by this thing. It's, it's a good thing for, for a community to have people who, you know, recognize like people among them. And uh, another thing that's, uh, that hasn't been mentioned that I think is very important, the most important thing I have to say, I think, is that this red flag law is not just about taking guns away from us step by step, little by little. It is that, but I think maybe it's more aimed at the First Amendment, the right to free speech, because Americans who like their guns want to keep their guns, and they like to speak out. Americans should speak out. They should criticize people like y'all and sometimes people like these. We should be able to criticize as we choose, whomever we choose, and yet it, with a red flag law, if you're a little too outspoken, they don't arrest you. They come and they arrest your guns. So it's, a, it's very much anti-First Amendment. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Webb. Uh, that concludes public comments, Mr. Bowes? Yes, Mr. Chairman, that concludes the public comments. Okay, very good. And, and we move now to the next item, which is the adoption of the agenda. Can we have a motion to approve the agenda that you see on the screen. So moved. Uh, Mr. Gardner, a second? Second. Uh, that's you, yes, sir. Sammy. Uh, Mr. Tucker, thank you very much. Uh, any uh, discussion on the agenda? 
Seeing there is none, we move to a vote. All those in favor, signify by raising your hand. And uh, Mary, it's unanimous. Mr. Chairman. Uh, yeah. Could I have one quick moment of point of order? I need to make a comment. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Carpenter, I've been getting some text messages that our live feed YouTube is not working. Maybe if you could get staff to look at that. Okay, thanks. Uh, and we'll get it recorded later Thank on you. and get it put back out. Live feed not working. All right, very good. We move now to a series of resolutions. The first item is a resolution recognizing the Carolina Cup Racing Association. The resolution is tab A. I propose to read it and then uh, we'll take a motion whether to act on it or not. I see uh, we have members of the association here. Let me read that. A resolution recognizing the Carolina Cup Ra Racing Association, whereas the Carolina Cup Racing Association has successfully supported and promoted the finest of steeplechases in North America for 87 years since 1932, and whereas the association has distinguished Kershaw County and the city of Camden as the locus for the lore of racing and the love of the animals in this sport. And whereas the annual races attract lovers of the sport and sustains this county as the recognized national leader of the sport of horse racing, uniquely celebrating an abundant recreational tourist and societal life of the horse industry and its advocates. And whereas the cup and its staff have thereby supported important industries and recreational spin-offs in adjacent sports, such as the growth of horse shows at the Equine Park, equestrian supply and support enterprises, and extensive clubs and private owners with fox hunting, rodeos, and trail, trail rides and the like. And whereas, as economic and public support has changed over the years, the association has had to innovate and find new ways to attract support. And the association has rejuvenated its marketing and marketing and management, has built and managed a most sought after venue in the Steeplechase Museum, and shown entrepreneurial skill in new uses for the facilities and their management for trainers and owners. And whereas its management has now found new ways that the course and facilities can be used and most recently attracted state level cross country races with as many as 3,500 runners at a time. Now therefore, be it resolved, Kershaw County Council commends the leadership and management of the Carolina Cup Race Association and its executive director, Toby Edwards, and its chairman, John Cushman, for vision and skill in promoting the sport of steeplechase and through which our county and our city are promoted. With that, can we have a motion to approve? Make the motion that we approve. Mr. Mr. Tucker, a second? Second. From Mr. Gardner, any discussion? Quick comment. Yeah, Mr. Jones, right I ahead. I would like to recognize our sheriff and thank our sheriff for the hard work he has put into participating with the Cup. It's, it's greatly appreciated means a lot to our county. Thank you. Very good. Other comments? I will say that there has been an amazing amount of uh, skill and innovation applied to keep this, this wonderful sport alive here in this city and county, and it has economic benefit to each and every citizen in this county when the largest event that we sponsor every year is held there. And finding new ways to use that ground given to us uh, by Marion DuPont Scott and supported over the years by important people throughout, to include most recently uh, the sponsored race this year by Mr. Tom Mulliken, all lends great support to our economy and to our society here. All right, any further discussion? Uh, with that, let's move to a vote. All those in favor, signify by raising your hand. And it's unanimous. Uh, Mary, you got the uh, proclamation over there? And if Toby and John Cushman can come up, we'll take a quick photograph, please.
Thank you very much indeed. We'll move now to the next item on the agenda, which is a resolution by Kershaw County Council expressing its support of Second Amendment rights. Uh, with that, I'll follow the, the same uh, protocol, read through it, and then we'll take a motion. Whereas the Second Amendment of the United States Constitution states in part that the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed, and whereas the same language is also contained in Article I, Section 20 of the Constitution of the State of South Carolina, which provides in pertinent part a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. And whereas the Kershaw County Council feels that the right of citizens to bear arms, as stated in both the United States Constitution and the Constitution of the State of South Carolina, is a fundamental right that should be protected to the greatest degree possible. And whereas the legislative assemblies of several states have begun adopting measures regarding gun control and it is expected these proposed measures which would greatly encroach on the constitutional rights of those citizens affected will be introduced in the aforementioned states as part of their 2020 legislative sessions. And whereas the Kershaw County Council by adopting this resolution wishes to express its strong support for the rights of citizens under the Second Amendment of the United States Constitution and the Constitution of the State of South Carolina urges the governor and members of the General Assembly to take no action which would violate the freedoms guaranteed in both constitutions. Now, therefore, be it resolved by Kershaw County Council that Kershaw County Council hereby expresses its strong support for the rights of citizens to bear arms pursuant to the Second Amendment of the United States Constitution and of the Constitution of South Carolina and urges the members of the General Assembly and the governor to take no action which would violate the freedoms guaranteed in both constitutions. I will now entertain a motion to approve this. Mr. Jones. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the council. I so move. Uh, we have a second. Second. Uh, for Mr. Snodgrass. Uh, Mr. Any discussion? Mr. Jones, you have the I privilege. do. I would like to very quickly. I'm going to sum it all up. I have introduced this resolution because of events that are taking place in other states across America. In other jurisdictions, legislation has passed or is being proposed that could limit citizens' access or possession of certain firearms, ammunition, or gun accessories. Such legislation has not passed here in South Carolina at this time. I think that's important for us to know. But I want our federal and state elected officials to know that Kershaw County supports the Second Amendment rights of its citizens. In my resolution here tonight, it doesn't, it hasn't got any power. It doesn't affirmatively take action. Rather, it only supports rights already granted by the United States and South Carolina constitutions. This resolution, this is what's important to me, urges the governor and the General Assembly to take no action which would violate the freedoms guaranteed by both constitutions. And um, I want to thank the individuals that got up and so bravely spoke tonight and even mentioned in their conversation the entire Constitution is important. But this is what we're dealing with here tonight. And I thank each and every one that got up and said, let's focus on this tonight. That's what we need to do. So thank you so much. Mr. Chairman, members of council, that concludes my comments. Thank you, Mr. Time. Bozart. Mr. Jones, one question. Do we intend to send this on up to the Capitol building, up to Columbia? You're asking me? Yes. Sure. Is that what you intend to do, uh, Madam Clerk? We need to send it on up. We don't need to let it sit here. Correct. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, other comments, uh, Mr. Snodgrass? Sure. I, I just, I was, I'll say that I, I do feel like we are blessed that we live in a state in which, personally, I don't feel... I don't feel like a resolution. I don't feel like we're forced to try to make this resolution. Luckily, we have uh, an environment in the state of South Carolina that is that is very uh, Second Amendment friendly. Now, all, we all realize that can change, and uh, and so I think that if that wind does begin to to shift, that.
they, uh, they understand how Kershaw County feels. Um, more importantly, and uh, Mr. Webb brought this up, uh, I, think, I think more than the Second Amendment, I, I fear that, I fear our freedom of religion uh, tends, to be, uh, to, tends to be under attack. And, uh, and so I would, I would encourage us to, uh, to not, not just this amendment, but to, to be aware of all the amendments, of all the freedoms, all the liberties that, uh, that, that is afforded to us, that has been bought with the price of those who have served, uh, that, that, we, that we are aware of all those liberties. And, uh, and not just, not just this, this one, uh, but, but that we do live in a country that recognizes that all men, all women are created equal, endowed with inalienable rights, by their creator, and uh, so thankful, thankful that we live that we live in this in this in this nation. Uh, other comments, uh, Mr. Connell, please. Sometimes you have a unique experience whenever you're sitting on council. Not that this is about me or any one of us, but people from different uh, times in your life will just be in the crowd, and it brings up real strong and uh, poignant memories. And that's happened to me tonight. Um, I remember growing up off Highway Five, uh, Mr. Holland and his kids. And he was one of the first individuals that taught me, in addition to my father, about the importance of gun rights and gun safety. And we grew up with guns out there uh, for defense, but as kids, it was for recreation and hunting primarily. Um, I see Mr. Craig Hudson at school. As he traveled around, he would teach us about the importance of guns in school. Mentioning school in high school, I can recall several of my friends uh, who would have that cool gun rack in their truck how quickly things change, huh? You'd have your shotgun and you go hunting after school or go out over the weekend, try to make it to the deer stand real early, and then uh, go to school afterwards, and that was totally fine. That was uh, just Kershaw County. And I miss that. I totally support the Second Amendment. Uh, a few of the comments tonight by those who signed up to speak, I think, stick out. Um, Mr. Jones comment about common military usage. I see an FN hat in the crowd. Uh, <laughs> not that I'm... Uh, one of their salespeople or anything, but they contract with the government to produce scars and other uh, heavy weaponry. Um, it would be nice if citizens could have access to it and afford them. Um, also, Mr. Steele. One of the things that sticks out to me is whenever your Second Amendment rights need to be invoked, it's typically because most of the other ones have already been uh, infringed upon. Your freedom of speech, as Mr. Snodgrass mentioned, your freedom of religion, your freedom to associate, uh, the right to not have unreasonable searches and seizures, all of these rights tend to have been violated in some way by someone. And yes, it has to be the government, I understand that. But I wanna make sure that we embrace what he said. And if we're gonna do this one, we gotta start looking for other opportunities, I guess, to uh, support uh, the entire Bill of Rights in the future as it comes up. You know, there, our rights are under attack all the time. One of the portions of the Bill of Rights I think that gets overlooked is the reservation of rights to the people in the states. Anything that hasn't been particularly spelled out in the Constitution to the federal government is your right, and it's reserved to the states. So while this resolution, admittedly by Mr. Jones, doesn't have any uh, real teeth, um, it represents, I think, the feeling that the people in this room and those who are watching at home and those in Kershaw County and the state of South Carolina do have teeth, that we have the ability to defend ourselves if we need to. And for that reason, I would support the, uh, the resolution. Thank you, Mr. Connell. Other comments? Uh, Mr. Gardner? Uh, I'm a gun owner. I firmly believe in the Second Amendment, and we've got to protect that at, at all cost. Uh, there's no better example than the church shooting weeks ago, a prime example of somebody with a gun that probably saved a lot of lives in that. Uh, you think about the laws and regulations, those things, you know, the laws are for honest people. You know, if you follow the laws, that's, that's who they're for, because criminals don't care about the laws. You can follow all the laws you want to. If you're a criminal, you don't care about those. So laws are for honest people. Laws are for, you know, those of us sitting in this room that follow them. And so that's that's uh, the the criminals don't care if I, you know if there's a gun law that you know that that did take our guns, the criminals not gonna give the guns. So it's vitally important that we keep the Second Amendment strong. Thank you. Thank you. Other comments. 
Now, seeing there are none, it looks like we can move to a vote. All those in favor, signify by raising your hand. And Mary, it's unanimous, and it passes. Thank you. And Mary, you and I can talk about how we get this up to the people that need to see it. All right? Very good. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Jones. We move now to the next item on the agenda, which is approval of the minutes. Can, and there you are on the board. Thank you. Uh, can we move to uh, have an ag a motion to approve the minutes, please? Move to approve minutes as submitted. Thank you, Mr. Gardner. Second. Second, second from Mr. Connell. Uh, any discussion? Mr. Chairman, I will be abstaining due to absence. That's right. Very good. All right. Uh, no discussion. We move to a vote. All those in favor, uh, signify by raising your hand. And it's unanimous. And if you'll record, Mr. Tucker is abstaining. That's, we move now to the next item which is a series of ordinances, uh, the first of which is a second reading of an ordinance of the County Council of Kershaw County to amend the official zoning map for a parcel belonging to Mr. Johnny Outlaw, and I see Mr. Outlaw here, your silver white hair, sir, good to see you. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Carpenter, can you take us through this, please? Mr. Chairman, members of council, you have before you tonight for second reading an ordinance to uh, rezone a piece of property of approximately 72 acres uh, from its current zoning of RD2 to GD. It has previously been submitted to council by the Planning Commission on a five to one vote, and council has passed it on first reading. Uh, very good, and uh, the map is up on the board showing Antioch. Can we have a motion to approve? Mr. Chairman, I make that motion. Uh, Mr. Snodgrass, uh, second. Second. Uh, second from uh, Mr. Bozard. Thank you, Al. Uh, any discussion? Mr. Chairman, I will say, uh, while the last resolution that we just passed may not have any teeth, uh, our, our, the, 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 the action, the proof is in the pudding. Uh, if, if you've read this zoning request, you know that there's a proposed pistol range going on this, on, uh, for this project. So if you were wondering where council thought or where we were on the Second Amendment rights, this passed unanimously last time, and I would imagine it's going to pass again. Uh, the discussion. Uh, Mr. Jones? Mr. Johnny Outlaw and his lovely wife, Minnie Pearl, thank you so much for what y'all do for the community. I'll say it again. We enjoyed ourselves when we were out there, and uh, I look forward to coming back. And uh, I'm excited about the range. CR Miles is as well. Thank you. Other discussion? I just say it's a well-built facility, Mr. Outlaw. You can really build it, man. Well done. And with that, no further discussion. We move to a vote. All those in favor, signify by raising your hand. And it's unanimous, and we'll move on to a third reading at our next meeting. Uh, the next item is an ordinance number two at tab E, and it's up on the board. Second reading of an amended restated ordinance determining rules and orders of business. Uh, I propose we go through the, this way. It's Mr. Uh, Tucker's uh, is a sponsor. Uh, we will have him place it on the floor, and I'm led to believe that he's going to take us through an amendment. So with that, can we have a motion... Uh, to approve. Make a motion to approve second reading on our council uh, rules and order of business. And can we have a second? Second. Second, second. second from Mr. Gardner. Um, i now turn to Mr. Tucker. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Just like to um, make a point of clarity before I do my amendment. Um, the proposed uh, ordinance that's in your packet and went out to the news media um, has the underlying parts. That was the changes in the first reading in November. The only thing different in this one, as you recall, is that I spoke about two uh, appendix that were going with that, which was appendix one was the public hearing guidelines, and then appendix two, which was the public uh, presentation guidelines. So that should be in your package as well. Okay. Just want to make that clear. So okay. my, Go ahead and make the motion there. Yes, and, and we'll so my motion is that we uh, amend uh, first reading to include Appendix 1, which is the public hearing guidelines, and Appendix 2, which is the public presentation guidelines. Okay, can we have a second? Second. Second. All right, discussion, Mr. Tucker. Yes, um, what we had uh, discussed at our last meeting when we read this was that um, we had um, the guidelines and our ordinance in two different places. So this puts everything together um, so you can have it when you look it up. And um, the... Pull my papers here so you can go through. Get to my 
minutes here. All right, the rules of um, the public hearing, um, it changes the word uh, wishes to speak, must identify themselves, uh, the folks who wishes to speak, in line item number two. And then you have in number three, an identified. Uh, it says when the public uh, hearing is open, the person to be notified as to how many people have signed up and identified in, in what order. And then in line item number four, it uses the word identify again. That's the only changes in appendix number one. All right. Anything further, Sammy? No, sir. All right. Okay. Uh, and then if we move to appendix number two, which is the public presentation. Uh, if you go to line item number two, it says the public presentation is limited to more, no more than three per meeting. Remember, we had four or five, and we were spending all day trying to get presentations in and um, delaying the folks from, from being able to hear what they come here for, which is the public's business. So um, we can have more, but we have to approve it. We can extend the time um, with the 20 minutes, um, but it has to be approved by this body. Actually, I think it was just two, and now you're going to three, so that's good. So it's going to be three and no more than 20 minutes. And if you know that someone's about to go over um, or the chairman feels he can stop at that time and see if we, you know, do they have five, do they need five more minutes or 10 more minutes? They can tell us we can extend it out okay. or not extend it out. It's going to be left up this body. But what we want to do is be consistent on how we treat everybody who comes before us. It's no up and down. It's straight across the board. Okay. Works. Uh, Mr. Jones. Again, Mr. Tucker, I, I do, when I saw that, I just want to say I was very pleased because we were at two, yes, sir. and you've, you've, your request is to raise it to three, so I, I think that's really good. Yes, sir. Good. Uh, Mr. Snodgrass. Uh, Mr. Tucker, questions? Yes, sir. Uh, when you, um, public comment, when you talk about identifying yourself, what is, kind of define that, what, what parameters? On the public comments? Yeah, just name um, address that, or no just your name you know we've had people come before us and not want to give their name right which is unbelievable i've sat here and watched that happen and you uh -huh. know name jane doe i remember it like it was yesterday yep. Th that can't happen if you want to speak mm -hmm. yeah and i would I, i'm kind of thinking out loud here which is dangerous <laughs> not thinking through this but um and you, you see this when you if you testify before a senate hearing uh, committee uh, I mean, I, I'd love for people, I, I'd love to know, you know, your name and, and where you're from and, and actually which, which one of us represents you. Um, I'm not, I'm not making them. I guess I'm just thinking out loud. And uh, I see the smoke. Yeah, you see the smoke. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mr. Chairman. You done? I'm done. Uh, yes, Mr. John, you. please, sir. I'm going to think out loud for a moment. Um, I think what you said about giving the name yes, sir. is all we need. I don't want to be real invasive. The thing about uh, bottom line is um, it takes a lot for someone to come here at 530, put their name on a list, stand up. I don't want them to feel like they're in front of a firing squad. No. And, and I think the way you've got it written up, just their name, I, I like that a lot. And I think that's, that's probably the way we need to keep it and go with. Thank you. Other Thank comments? You. Uh, Mr. Bozart. Yes, I agree with that. One gentleman spoke here tonight was from Richland County, but he didn't, we don't represent him. So they're free to speak in this body. Absolutely. Thank Mr. You. Mr. Chairman, one more thing, too. Mr. Chairman, if I may finish. Yeah, please. Uh, what I was going to say, too, is that, and, and as far as where they live, what district, I don't care. I represent everybody in this county. And I get more calls sometimes from Bethune, Antioch, Tukidu than I do my own district. I don't even know what a district is. I wish I did. My life might be a little bit easier. But anyway, thank you. Uh, other comments? All right. Well, it looks like we seem to be supporting this. I would, I would propose we move to a vote. All those in favor, signify by raising your hand. And it passes on second reading with the amendment. And now we move to a vote on the, the ordinance as amended. Can we, have, can we move to a motion to do that? Uh, Mr. Gardner, and a second from Mr. Tucker. Any discussion? All right, let's move to a vote. All those in favor, so signify. And it passes on the second reading as amended. We move now to the next item on the agenda. Uh, let me get you my agenda. 
which is uh, new business, yes, an administrator and evaluation and compensation. Uh, for this, we'll need to go into executive session. Uh, and I propose we go into executive session uh, with Mr. Carpenter and Mr. DeBose. Uh, at first, Ken, we won't need you, but we will need Mr. Carpenter, and then we'll call you in. And then I would say the motion should go we move to executive session with Mr. Carpenter and Mr. DeBose, and uh, we may come out and vote. Can we have a motion to that effect, please? I'll make that motion. Uh, Mr. Connell, a second? Second. Uh, for Mr. Tucker, discussion. Uh, I would say, and while we have discussion, Mary, you've provided everybody a package. All right, and that is not available to the media, it's, uh, but it can be. Uh, Mr. Jones. Mr. Chairman, it, what, if I may? Thank you for recognizing me. I was trying to follow us here on this. Um, I would really love to see us move this to the very end of the meeting because we're going to go into executive session. Let's finish everything else so that the people won't have to sit out here and wait. And I, I just think it'd be more convenient for them. Yeah, I think it is the end of the last meeting agenda item. Council briefings follow. Well, we got council briefings, administrative briefing, legal briefing. Yeah, that normally. Okay. This okay. Is the one, yeah. Thank you so much. Right? You're okay. correct. All right. Any further discussion? Okay, let's move to a vote. All those in favor signify us by raising your hand. And we will move to executive session, and we may come back out and vote. Thank you very much. No, no, we don't. We won't have enough. Come out of executive session. Can we have a motion that, that we come out of executive session? Move to come out of executive session. Uh, Mr. Gardner, so moved. Second, second that. Second that, Mr. Second Chairman. from Mr. Snodgrass. Any discussion? Uh, with that, we move back into our second reading, excuse me, administrator evaluation and compensation. Take the vote. Oh, right, you got to take a vote. All those in favor <laughs> signify by raising your hand. For what? You're coming out of executive <laughs> He said for what? <laughs> okay, it's unanimous uh, in one way or another. Thank you. So we're back uh, in session. The item on the agenda when we departed was administrator's evaluation and compensation. Uh, is, is, do we have a motion? Mr. Connell. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we increase <coughs> the administrator's um, compensation base salary by 2%. My rough calculation is $3,177.50 with all remaining uh, material terms in the contract being the same for the 2020 calendar year. Okay, do we have a second? Second. From Mr. Tucker, discussion. Uh, seeing there is none, uh, we move now to a vote. All those in favor, so signify by raising your hand. And it's unanimous. And we uh, raise the pay by 2% over the calendar year. Uh, with that, we move to the next item on the agenda, which is a council briefings, uh, beginning with Mr. Connell, please. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, a few things. First one, uh, the toughest one, Gene Falkenberry. I, uh, I'm just sad that I didn't get to know him for a longer period of time. And uh, <coughs> you often say you stand on the shoulder of giants. Having very limited knowledge about fire service and EMS, as Keith and Scott can attest to, um, Gene has done a great service to Kershaw County in shepherding us to a full-time fire service. The legacy of increased safety will be perpetual in Kershaw County because of that move. And I'm so thankful to him for that. And my heart goes out to his family and all those that loved and cared about him. Um, obviously, very concerned for the folks who, uh, who have been impacted by the tornado at North Central High School, but I've been very impressed and pleased with the response from all the partners in the community who are making it happen for the kids so that they can uh, move forward with their schooling. I wanted to mention um, great thanks for Mayor Emmons and Chief Brown and Kim Stokes, who headed up the Toy Roundup event and uh, fundraiser. They raised thousands of dollars for families in need in Kershaw County. And uh, it's just a touching thing to, to have witnessed and know that they put that much effort into it uh, each year. I want to update the council that the dog park or the proposed dog park that uh, is intended to be donated to the county has been cleared uh, right near Watery Dental on Highway 1. It's over three acres. They plan on having an agility section, a large dog section, and a small dog section. And uh, you can probably expect some fencing and some other things going up out there pretty soon. Maybe uh, summertime it might, might be ready. So you'll be hearing more about that. August 8th 
is a possible date for a uh, land jam concert that uh, the county's been working on with some uh, private entities and a promoter locally. It'd be a country music festival out at the Watery River parcel. They're entertaining the idea of a uh, rodeo, rodeo out there as well. And uh, the promoter felt like it was just an ideal location for that to happen. And a lot of sponsors have been lining up and interested in making that event happen. So more to come on that. And then uh, lastly, I wanted to mention that the Rotary Wild Game Dinner will be uh, February 8th at City Arena. Each year, uh, West Watery Rotary, and now they've teamed up with Camden Rotary, uh, give over $30,000 in scholarships. Uh, it is strong for local high school students. And I'll be cooking all the wild pork, so <laughs> if you want to steer away from... If you want to steer away from that, that's fine. I won't be offended, but we'll be out there overnight cooking probably 28 to 30 butts and shoulders that have been donated locally from hogs that primarily come from Kershaw County, a lot of them along the Watery River, and they'll have all kinds of other wild game fare for you to enjoy. And that's my report, Mr. Thank Chairman. Thank you, sir. Mr. Jones. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the County Council. I'm going to start and end with just one thing tonight. And I, and I had quite a few. I had written them down here that I was going to discuss. Um, Gene Falkenberry was a friend, just as Keith is my friend. We worked together as fellow employees. I was here when Gene walked in the first day he came to work, as I was a county employee as well. I was here when Keith walked in the first day of a county employee, and Keith and Gene were there for me when I retired, sat in the office. I don't know if you remember, Keith. We sat in the office, and he's going to be missed. I do, I, I, I am concerned. I think about Christy a lot. I think about you, Keith, a lot. Y'all were together for, what, how many years? 20 years? And um, just know that our hearts and prayers are with y'all and with his family as well. And God bless each and every one of you. And uh, I love you guys. I know, I know we have bumps in the road. I know sometimes y'all may not understand my way of thinking or thoughts. <laughs> but uh, y'all get me a whole lot better than they do. But bottom line is, thank y'all for what y'all do. Thank y'all so much. And I'm going to stop or I'm going to be there with you, Keith. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Jones, uh, Mr. Snodgrass. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of council, uh, I did want to begin my remarks by also uh, recognizing um, Gene Falkenberry. I, I knew him the least amount of time up here because I've only been here on council one year. But I just I did want to take time just to just to say when I after I was first elected, Gene was one of the first people I was introduced to uh, when uh, the, the county administrator gave me a tour of of the of the building. And my my, my first thought was, wow, if if every if every county director is as knowledgeable about their department as this as this man is, uh, this county is is ran by some some exceptional exceptional people, and uh, so that that was that always impressed me about him, and was thankful that we had him to get us through the fire uh, the fire service um, switch that we did this past May. Uh, he and of course the rest of the, the fire leadership. So uh, a lot of organizational memory, uh, I believe. Uh, we lost there. A lot of things that are probably not written down or not in a policy book, but we could always pick up the phone and, and, and hey, Gene, what do you think about this? So I, I think about those, those types of things. So um, just uh, hats off to, 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 to his life and, and uh, praying for, he, for his family. And uh, I want to also just kind of tip my hat to uh, the Solid Waste Department. Uh, they, anytime you go through a holiday season, uh, that's a really a busy time for them. I think it's very ironic that when we're when we're at a season where we're getting rid of our stuff, uh, they're at a season where they're receiving all of our stuff that we don't want any longer. And uh, so, uh, on a on a day that is recognized by the Canadians as Boxing Day, uh, I found myself loading up the cardboard box dispenser <laughs> uh, there at the airport um, location and. Uh, I, from my view, at my location, they were they were ready and they were prepared. Uh, new businesses that are coming into uh, our my, District Five, uh, Get Well Get Well Pharmacy, uh, which is now going to be located in the old Fred's building in East Camden. So, want to highlight them and 
Uh, they'll, be, they'll be up and running very, very soon. Uh, I want to recognize a, a citizen of, of, of District 5. Uh, just, just today, uh, Mr., uh, Mr. Gene Parnell was named the Texas Roadhouse Hero of the Month. And, uh, in fact, that's uh, Gary's father. That's Gary's right. one of our <laughs> fire service uh, guys. And uh, so that's just his father. And so I just want to, anytime I hear about those type of things, of, of citizens being recognized in District 5, I just want to take time to, to highlight that as well. Uh, I want to I highlight the guys in the back of uh, First Responders Fire Service, EMS, this past Saturday uh, night through Sunday morning, even now, how you guys responded to the uh, tornado the tornado landing there at North Central High School. Thank you guys so much for, uh, for doing that and being there. I mean, obviously, you, you're doing your job, and, and I was thankful for, for you. I know some of you were there uh, for up 12, 20, maybe almost 24 hours there on scene. So thank you for doing that. And, and uh, obviously, my uh, prayers continue to go with, with our North Central family in that part of, of the county. Lastly, guys, I want to thank you for uh, a great first year. Uh, just completed my first year on on council, and so thank you for for being patient uh, with me when maybe I asked a question that may have been a dumb question or uh, uh, calling uh, every one of you guys. I've, I call on the phone and say, "Hey, what? How do we do this? Or what do you think about this?" And and uh, so thank you, thank you so much for uh, for a great first year. And uh, it's just been it's been an honor to serve with you, and I'm looking forward to to continue to serve with you. We've just in the, this last year, we just, we've made some really, really neat strides. Um, thank you to our executive staff, uh, Miss Mary, Danny, and uh, Vic. Thank you guys for, uh, for kind of holding my hand sometimes through this first year. So that concludes my remarks. Thank you, sir. Mr. Taco. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just to uh, dovetail a little bit on what um, Councilman Snodgrass was saying is um, I want to, um, the Falconberry family and all that's, related and friends to him, uh, just express my <coughs> condolence and my um, heartfelt love for the family and um, the loss of this community. Um, with that being said, as I was up there Sunday morning uh, with all of you uh, walking around and uh, trying to figure out what all took place up there and that devastation, um, I could only keep hearing the words that Gene would be proud. And, um, and I did owe that because... Um, you guys did one heck of a job. Guys, when I say that, I'm talking about the ladies as well. Um, so I, um, I commend you and thank you, um, one Kershaw, and that's what we keep demonstrating over and over again through our trials and tribulations, good times and bad times, and that's what makes this place so special. Appreciate the media coming out. I mean, um, they didn't have to come out on a Sunday. Most people were in church or doing Riverside Baptist, you know, or Bedside Baptist, whichever one they attend. Yeah, um, but they, they made their way out there, and um, we took a terrible situation and made the best and continue to make the best. But um, continue to pray for the school district, the children, the teachers, and the principals, and the community out there in Cassett and Bethune and uh, Westville and Barony Cab, all that's affected. And, uh, and know that we here, and I'm going to speak for all of us, is uh, here to do whatever we need to do and what we can do to help better that situation as we continue to build uh, back in the North Central area. With that, I want to say thank you to uh, you, Vic, uh, for the job you've done over 2019. Um, I know um, we're not always easy to seven of us up here to, to deal with, but I think you always manage how to deal with us, and I appreciate you and the job you've done for the citizens of Kershaw County throughout the years. It doesn't seem like you've been here nine years, almost a decade. Um, but I thank you personally, and, um, and I say thank you collectively for this body. I um, want to make sure that you all know that you're invited this coming Monday. So if you want to hear some good singing and get your praise on, yes, please, please come to the ML Day celebration, uh, which is January the 20th, Monday at 530 it's in walking distance from here at the Camden First United Methodist Church. And um, I appreciate the media getting the word out and um, um, announcing uh, that day. And um, it's a special day that we all can come together and, um, and we'll have different opinions of things in life. But one thing we do know, and um, I think that we all believe in, that we we'll always fight for the human rights 
um, equality and justice. And I don't think that's ever questioned when it comes down to the people that's in this room. It's just sometimes others are misunderstood or don't get it right. So um, we invite you. We invite you with open arms. And uh, we just want to love on you and uh, get your spirits up so you can go out and do even better work than what you're doing. And I just want to tell everyone in the room that I haven't told a Happy New Year. That concludes my report. Thank you, sir. Mr. Gardner? Uh, very quickly, uh, Mr. Snodgrass, your probation time is up, so don't expect <laughs> that uh, level of uh, kindness in you, from us anymore. So. Uh, just to keep North Central in your prayers, uh, you know, they go back to school tomorrow, and uh, they're, they're going to have some situations that, uh, you know, you think about the extracurricular, like the basketball team's going to be playing all their games away. They've got to find a place to practice, the wrestling team, and the other extracurricular uh, it's going to be really tough. They don't have a cafeteria. They don't have a gym. Uh, it's going to be really tough on them for a little while. And uh, you know, but it's so great to see the collaborative effort and the cooperation between, you know, the community there and the community of Kershaw County because that's what we are. And uh, all of our folks, uh, like Sammy mentioned and David mentioned, with our EMS and all the, the, the firefighters and first responders. It's uh, you know, uh, county staff. Uh, school district, uh, people from across the state. Uh, it's amazing that you see, and you see now that our, our sister schools are collecting uh, school supplies for them and things like that. That's what makes Kershaw so great, Kershaw County so great. So, uh, but keep them in your prayers because it's uh, hard times are still ahead. So, yes. Thank you. Uh, and I'll close it out before we go. Oh, yeah, Mr. Bo <laughs> Mr. I did it again for Mr. Bozard. Go ahead. You do it to me every time. Every time. <laughs> I want to thank this council for the way they conducted business tonight. I do appreciate that. And Vic, I want to thank you for this past year and the way you've handled this county. And uh, I deeply appreciate it. Stepping up when we've lost people, stepping up when you needed to. Now, can you tell me where we stand with the water slide project? Slide. Oh, you got it. Okay, I'm sorry. I will, I'll wait. I'll wait. All right. <laughs> you have permission to proceed. Yes, Thank sir. You. Go right ahead. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll echo what everyone else said about the spirit of the county. Uh, and I remember some words from Martin Kahn in his editorial, but how he kept hearing, how can we help? And then he helped, kept hearing, we are here for you. And there they are in the back row back there. That's Gene Falkenberry back there. Uh, that's his spirit lives on in us, and we'll carry forward. I would point out that even in the school district, Billy Smith left his hospital bed to come out and be there. And uh, those of you who know Billy well, there's a serious situation there in his health, but he was there because we are Kershaw County. Uh, some administrative things. Uh, first of all, we return to two meetings a month. Uh, the next meeting is the 28th. Uh, secondly, um, Mr. Carpenter is going to take us through not just the two meetings a month, but through the work sessions that now go in towards our budget. And that begins uh, now. And w with surveys, with each of you submitting your priorities for goals and objectives, and a few other things of that nature, the process takes over. I want to congratulate our mayor here for her re-election. I haven't seen you since then officially, but also my counterpart in the school board and all the school board re-elections uh, nominated, uh, put, put back into office uh, the chair, the vice chair, uh, the chaplain, uh, the CFO, the CTO, they were all uh, voted in today at 10 o'clock. Uh, lastly, congratulations uh, to you, Mr. Carpenter. Uh, a great year, and I hope uh, for an even better year in 2020. With that, the council briefings are done, and we turn it over to Mr. Carpenter. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, members of council, um, Mr. Bozard, the uh, splash pad is, uh, of course, that's a, a city project the county is participating in. County staff has been meeting with city staff and the contractors. They're, um, right now we're working on getting the site cleared. Uh, to in, or, in order to ensure that um, we uh, have the, the suitable pad for building. Uh, the contractor is under a, uh, a guidance of having it open by Memorial Day. Uh, so, the, um, so the project continues. And 
and then we move forward with it. Who's the contractor? I would, I'll get that for you, sir. I didn't have that with me tonight. It, it, was, it was a bid let by the city, so, so the city is in charge of all those details, but I'll get you those details, sir. Um, members of council, I want to, um, I'm really uh, sorry that uh, this is one of those cases where, uh, where our citizens aren't all here, but I hope they're watching tonight because I want to recognize, uh, you see behind me tonight, men and women, uh, and, and they are the heart of this county, and, and in so many ways, they're, they're the ones that are making uh, this county a great place. You know, and I want to first um, uh, point out to your attention, uh, Brandon Price, his name was mentioned. Uh, Brandon was the first on scene uh, at the uh, school I came upon. He, uh, he uh, responding to an alarm, uh, not knowing what he was going to find, because as we already know, the tornado didn't hit anywhere else. So no one knew that a tornado had hit there until Brandon got there. Uh, Brandon, if you would please stand up so council can recognize you. Uh, also has been mentioned tonight, um, um, Mr. Falkenberry, uh, you know, his, his crowning achievement, he, he was so proud of us moving to a 24-7 uh, full-time fire service. I won't say professional because they've always been professional, uh, but so many of our volunteers uh, drew a paycheck somewhere else. And uh, they wanted to be here if they could, and that was one of his passions and dreams, he and Keith. And uh, we moved to it this past year. Uh, but if you were out there uh, on Saturday, on Sunday, uh, into Monday, um, you would have seen um, two of our newest men, um, uh, Stephen Teal and Gary Parnell. Uh, they were there um, as battalion commanders, uh, providing leadership and guidance uh, to the men and women that were there from fire service. And the fire service is critical, because if you had a building whose condition nobody really knew, in order to access any part of that building, they had to have somebody with them who was capable and competent enough to save them if they needed saving. And so those firemen, our, our county employees and our volunteers were out there with their full gear on, uh, and, and their job was to protect the citizens, to protect the uh, education employees that are out there. Um, uh, Stephen Gary, if you'd stand up, please. Beside them, uh, Scott, Scott Wiles, of course. Uh, Scott has been, been thrown into a lot of, uh, a lot of things, uh, you know, not the least, of course, is trying to pick up slack as well um, with Gene's passing. Uh, Scott was there on site. Um, he uh, quickly took command as incident commander. And uh, the reason, one of the reasons why we didn't have uh, issues is because of just how well trained the organization is. And, and Scott exemplified that. And uh, I heard one of y'all mention about uh, being out there 24 hours. Scott, how many hours were you there before you went to bed? 18 hours. 18 straight hours after a full day break. <laughs> Scott, please stand up, Scott. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, our EMS, uh, Gerald is here. Uh, of course, Gerald needs no uh, introduction, but... Uh, the, the, again, the, the uh, cool competence with which our EMS responded, again, uh, if someone got hurt, and, and, and we didn't know. You know. They didn't know if a wall was going to collapse, a roof was going to come in, an air conditioning unit was going to fall through, and, uh, and those guys were there. And again, um, you know, Gerald was, was uh, so quickly on the scene, very early on, and, um, and, and putting information out, a role that Gene would have played in many cases, Gerald took on and, and, and shared information and made sure that that we knew what was going on. So, Gerald, if you'd please stand up for me. Thank you, Jerry. <laughs> Moving on, I'd like to share with you a different thing the county's doing that's exciting, and it uh, showcases just what we're doing. Um, you'll see coming up on a second our new FAST team. And let me tell you about the FAST team. The FAST team is a re quick response uh, that we have put together to very rapidly within 24 hours solve problems that are called, caused in to, called into our county public works. Potholes, signs that are down, things that we can respond to, uh, things that, that our citizens see and if we don't respond to them and fix them, it's very clear to them, very evident that it's still there. They drive by them every day. Uh, we have utilizing existing equipment and existing staff and we've repurposed it. So the cost to the citizens is, is very minimal, almost non-existent. Uh, but it allows us to, within, again, 24 hours, solve these problems. And 
And behind me, I've got Artie Allen. And Artie, you see in the picture there, Artie is, is our leader, our team leader on that. And they're, they're averaging, their goal is to have between uh, 60 and 100 a week uh, of responses taken care of. So as they're called in, and we're not talking seven signs on one road is seven different responses. They're talking seven different issues that, that they would fix as one issue. And 60 to 100. Artie, if you'd stand up so council can recognize you. <laughs> I hope, members of council, you, you see these men and women and you're excited about where we are as a county and the kind of people you have working for you and the citizens. Because we've got great things. It's because of them. It's because of the training, the leadership that people like um, Gene provided to them. And I'm just proud to represent them to you. And that's my report. Thank you. Amen. Thank you very much. Mr. DeBose. Um, but Chairman, I have nothing to say except Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Mr. DeBose. Thank you very much. With that, that concludes the meeting. We motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Is, do we have a second, please? <laughs> second. Second for Mr. Gardner. Any discussion? Seeing there is none, let's move to a vote. All those in favor, so signify. And it's unanimous, Mary. And we are adjourned for the first meeting of the year. Thank you.